Wait, Mike Tomlin said what yesterday? Are you kidding? Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates. Same place you found this night. Hope you'll check those out as well. Tomlin spoke with reporters yesterday at the NFL owners' meetings. Free agency, roster composition, coaching additions, and other stuff. And then he also did a one-on-one interview with Missy Matthews, the Steelers' own reporter. And she asked the head coach how he was planning on addressing the quarterback position, given that the team prefers to have four in camp. And this was Tomlin's response in its entirety. You know, um, probably the draft, I think, is our target as we sit here today. But, um, you know, there's so many moving parts in draft development. And so um, that's our target. But we'll see what happens and transpires. Obviously, uh, how the names come off the board have a lot to do with with that now you can go ahead and interpret that however you want right but i heard a probably meaning that's probably the goal is to get a quarterback in the draft to get that quarterback that they don't yet have in the draft you can take the draft and extrapolate it to potentially future drafts as well, but then he made a very clear reference to how things shake out in the order who gets taken ahead. That's not referring to 2023, and you know what? It doesn't take that much to decipher that he's probably not talking about how quarterback selections will unfold in, like, you know, the sixth or seventh round. That's a dead giveaway. That doesn't mean they're going to draft a quarterback, but it means that's the principal aim. And as both he and Kevin Colbert said in separate sessions yesterday, they're not really into the subterfuge thing. They never have been. This is supported by recent draft history. They feel completely comfortable advertising not only what position they want, but also which player they want. They don't see the benefits of getting all sneaky and crafty and clever in disguising what it is that they're doing because their own background in the draft process has told them, and they've talked about this, that it doesn't really matter who knows what it is that you're doing. If you're going to trade up, for example, you're going to do that with absolutely everybody knowing exactly what you want and who you're going for. Oh, and by the way, who you need to get over in order to get the player at the position that you're looking for. And one might easily argue that that's doubly true when it comes to quarterback. It's the single most predictable position to assign to a team in any first round in any year. We always enter the first round having a really, really good idea of who's going for a quarterback, who's not, who's in a position where they can move down because they don't need a quarterback, or for that matter, who really needs to move up in order to get the quarterback that they want. It's the worst kept secret of the draft, and the Steelers apparently are acting accordingly. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. So no, I don't buy for a split second that Tomlin's playing some kind of game when he says this. I believe they want a quarterback. And I believe that they want a quarterback in the first round. And I'm beginning to believe, 
after a statement like this one yesterday, that they are, in fact, willing, maybe eager, to move up to get that player. To which the logical follow-up question is, yeah, who? I'm thinking Malik Willis. Are you thinking somebody other than Malik Willis? I had a football analyst who I trust an awful lot tell me last night at the Penguins game at PPG Paints Arena that he believes Willis could go number two overall to the Lions. Let's not forget that the Lions could use a quarterback too, unless you're the sort that would believe in Jared Goff. Goff could be, as this analyst pointed out, a pretty nice two-year placeholder, possibly the same way that the Steelers would be looking at Mitch Trubisky. Know what I mean? Willis, by every account, would require some seasoning. He would not be just thrown out there the way Dwayne Haskins was in Washington and then possibly set back. You would bring someone like that in and let them learn. Let them practice. Let them see what the league's all about. And hey, look, if he's this super spectacular athlete, maybe you find some other way to ensure that he gets involved in the offense somewhere along the way. But he might not be there. And unless the Steelers are planning to, oh, I don't know, trade up all the way to number two overall or number one, they can't assure themselves of even having a chance at this player. No, I don't think he's going at two or whatever, but I do think that Willis is going to end up being the first quarterback picked. I do think that the Steelers would prefer him over anyone else in this class. And as such, that's now where the formulas are going to start spinning. There's not going to be anyone who hears what Tomlin had to say yesterday, nor anyone who's observed Tomlin chasing quarterbacks all over creation on these pro days, who's going to believe for a second that the Steelers are taking someone else, not based on how they work. And I've said this before, and I'm going to repeat it. If the Steelers feel so strongly about Willis that they're willing to move up to get him, I'll, I'll get behind them because they'll have way more information than any of us could ever have. And if your conviction is that strong, then you'd theoretically be going against what's best for the organization by not trying to act on it. Wow, we are in for so much Fun when we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for just one question, and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garvin, Kelly, and George. LGKG. They represent people who are Hurt in car accidents who need assistance with workers' comp and medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been designated Super Lawyers, capital S, capital L, for the past 15 years. And yes, that is a real thing. The Super Lawyer designation is reserved for the top 5% of all attorneys in Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at LGKG.com or by calling 888-842-5454. And today's J1Q comes from Ben Morgan in Wellington, New Zealand. Ben asks, what type of wide receiver might the Steelers be looking at in the draft? Last season when Juju went down, I'd expected Claypool to get pushed more into a big slot role with Washington coming in on the boundary. That didn't happen. Ray Ray came in and stayed there, and I took that as perhaps Claypool not being able to handle the slot. Maybe I'm wrong there. Should the Steelers or could the Steelers be looking for an earlier round pick on an outside wide receiver like, say, a Christian Watson or maybe a pure slot guy like Sky Moore? Ben, as with 
most everything related to the wide receivers with this particular football team, it hinges, as you correctly noted there, on Claypool. We still have to figure out what Chase Claypool is. What is he good at? What does he do? Well, what's his strength in a general sense? We've seen the little things. We've seen the plays that he can make out of the slot. We've seen the extra yards that he can pick up. We've seen, obviously, what he can do with, with end arounds. He's an impact player, potentially, especially in that regard. However, let's talk about those deep contested catches. Let's talk about how he goes up for the football and doesn't necessarily battle for it excessively hard. Let's talk about the falling down and the other uh, apparent lack of mechanics because it can't be a physical wherewithal. He can do anything physically. It just doesn't always happen. Once you have that answer, you're going to know a lot about the wide receiving core that you have. The problem is you're not going to have that answer between now and the draft. So to answer your question, if I'm the Steelers, I'm looking plain and simple for the best wide receiver, regardless of their skill set. Yes, it's tempting to say you want the field stretcher because it feels like the Steelers haven't had one of those in a while. But how much of that was the receivers and how much of that was Ben Roethlisberger not even really looking downfield? And how much of that was Matt Canada? Lots and lots of questions with this group. Maybe more than with any other positional group on the roster. But I will reiterate that I'd have no issue whatsoever if this football team added to the wide receiver room off the top of this draft, and I mean first or second round. And remember, you can get a really, really good receiver in the second round, sometimes even in the third round with how deep that position is generally year after year coming out of college. I would love to see it. Now, would I love it more than, let's say, the next terrific future defensive line stud? Probably not. Probably not. Would I love it more than quarterback? Yes. Yes, unquestionably. And maybe some of that is selfish short-term thinking because that receiver is going to be able to walk right onto your field and compete for a spot. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. Let's do another one tomorrow. 